welcome to the Bass Monk Channel. Today, I will present interviews with New York area A-list musicians on how John and Alice Coltrane influenced their musical development. I will also provide information on the Coltrane home in Dix Hills below. If you enjoy what you see, please like and subscribe as there's more to come. And I first heard Coltrane's music as a sophomore in high school. Um, my dad was a big band arranger and trumpet player, but he never told me about Coltrane. He told me about Stan Getz and others. He was more uh, eccentric guy, but a little more musically conservative. So I found out Train on my own by going to a record store and seeing this album called Kula Say Mama. Well, it turns out he was already headed toward his more exploratory so, so I brought that home and it kind of scared me at first. But then I listened more and listened more and suddenly it's like a whole new world opened up. And then I was hooked from that point on. Barbecue parties, you know, so the gentleman next door to me and then another friend of mine, and I went to his house and he played um, my, uh, the Coltrane's uh, My Favorite Things. And I never, I said, what is that? I never heard that before. And it was a compilation CD album and it also had Miles' It's Kind of Blue on it. And I never heard that, that kind of beauty like that. And so that's what, how I got introduced into Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Philly Joe Jones, the whole thing. I went on Baldy CD. My introduction to John Coltrane was uh, probably first as a teenager, just listening to a Love Supreme amongst many other albums. But really, I started to dig in harmonically in college under the tutelage of Professor Andy Jaffe at Williams College where I started getting inside the melodies, getting inside the rhythms and stuff like that. And uh, I remember the first time I heard uh, his, his version of My Favorite Things, I can remember the time code, something like 103 or 108 where he goes up high on soprano. You know, these are the type of, of uh, moments that stick with you that inspire my own band and, and the decisions we make on the bandstand. So uh, Coltrane has been and of course I'm not unique in this regard. Coltrane has been an absolute inspiration for jazz musicians and musicians in other genres all over the world. When I was young, when I was younger, I just was starting out in music, I used to work different jobs and I would go into the local Woolworths and we would get the, the uh, records there. You know, they were, uh, some of them were promo copies, they were really cheap, I used to pick up all different jazz recordings there. And I picked up Love Supreme and um, you know, just absolutely rocked my world. I mean, just a sp just pure spirit, and uh, it, it it was just incredible. And I, I was 16, 17 years old when I first experienced John Coltrane. Um, you know, and every musician, every 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 jazz musician who's who's develops as as a as a musician studies Giant Steps. I mean, we just analyze that tune over and over again, and we work on it and. You know, I was just at a. Con I was. I go to the Nam show every year and perform out there. And you know, Scott Henderson was there practicing with his iPad, playing Giant Steps for like an hour before his show. I mean, so you know, you, 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 it's just like a tune-up for, for all, like you know, all levels. Even A-level musicians are using that to keep them, keep them fresh and bright, you know, bright and and, and developing through chord motion. And uh, you know, even to this day, I'm, I work out like I've been working out with Giant Steps like as a daily. You know, it's a daily stretch. You know, you you get up and you might stretch. You you know, like uh, uh, we get up and we yawn and stretch. And and I, I I as a musician, my stretch is giant steps. John Coltrane's giant steps. And I'm not the only one. I know, you you probably do the same thing. I mean, I know many other musicians that use that as a as a, you know, an, an inspiration and development piece. For that matter, when I was uh, younger and just just getting to know a little bit about about harmony. Once I learned the basic um, concepts of modal playing by listening to uh, Miles Davis and was a very big uh, fan of Bill Evans, I then started to hear something different in, uh, in the sound of uh, John Coltrane and the famous uh, sheets of sound uh, approach that he took. And then the, the, the Love Supreme, Love Supreme and, and the mysticism in his music really affected my playing. 
and I performed here today at the Coltrane uh, Day and a lot, I was thinking while I was playing and improvising and all, all of the different things that I was trying to do and approaching, I felt like John Coltrane was looking down on us and saying, yeah, that's, that's what I had in mind. In terms of studying Coltrane, I would have to admit that I probably haven't gone as deep into it, you know, with the hundreds of transcribed solos and all that as others did. It was more through assimilating, through the listening, and not only just listening, but feeling the consciousness of the music, the spirit inside the music. That's what really hooked me. I think it was just way beyond notes. It was actually later that I discovered his previous period, uh, I would call the Giant Steps period, where he had taken bop to a whole new level you know, with tremendous technical facility. And uh, I was lucky enough to have a great woodwind teacher at the time, um, Joe Allard, who was the head of woodwinds at Juilliard and New England Conservatory. And um, he would use Coltrane solos as dangling the carrot in front of me, but I had to learn the classical solos first. You know, you have, to, you have to do the legit stuff first, then we'll show you some Coltrane solos. Um, but in terms of listening more deeply, well, that first album I mentioned, Coolest Mom, was like the portal. The portal that opened up to the kingdom of Coltrane. And then from there, um, I kind of stayed in that period buying albums like Meditations, Ohm, Ascension, and my dad thought I totally lost it. Is it, you know, he sort of, his philosophy was, Coltrane was great until he went crazy. But crazy is what I liked, or so-called crazy. That's when he was going to his deepest explorations. And also because of my interconnection that I developed with Indian music and culture and the spirituality, Coltrane was completely going in that direction. So that's why I resonated with it so wonderfully. No matter how out it seemed to others, it went straight to the, the heart center and just opened up new worlds, and it still is opening up new worlds, even to this day. Uh, John Coltrane is uh, one of the greatest influences for me as a musician. Uh, uh, and I listen to all different instruments and all different styles of music. Uh, he reached areas of, of, of me spiritually that um, other players didn't necessarily get to, other great players. Today, first of all, I did one of the workshops, and it was good to reach another, ge another generation or intergeneration, uh, whether it be male or female, of, of, uh, uh, that were coming together to learn how to play music, this thing called music. At some points, I think, hopefully, and we did ask, had you ever heard of John Coltrane? You know, and it's like, <laughs> you want to play saxophone, you want to play music. Well, we, as, a, as a young player, I always knew you had a Beethoven boxer. So it's the same thing in our music, which is called, you know, I guess, classical music of America. It's the same thing. You should know John Coltrane, Miles Davis, all these people that, at least that were living, made, made the history, even though there were tons of people around them that, that they talked about that never got as much play as they did. But yeah, it'd be good for them to know who John was. And it's great for me, I think it's most of us that were there, to be able to extend that love to these children or the next generation so that they will come in and realize this is your music. This is made right here in America, it's your music, and it's hopefully we'll, we'll keep those, those legacy alive. You know, you know, we don't expect another John Coltrane to come around right away, but you know, there will be, because even when he was born, he didn't think that he was the next bird, but that's just how it happened, the, the next Charlie Parker, but that's how that was passed on to him. And so everybody just tries to do the best they can, and we try to relate to the people too. We're not trying to make you the, a musician like that, but whatever it is you do, to be the best that you can be in the United States, specifically to remember those people in the music that were shining lights, that made it possible for us to think differently, to look at different things, uh, and to make ourselves better better people, I guess is a better word for it. Yeah, yeah. so Alice, um, it, for me, uh, it took it took more nuanced listening to, to really understand what she was doing. Her heart playing uh, was was um, very special in in that it it used um, it used rhythmic figures that were um, repeated and and created uh, a very beautiful chant like um, uh, essence. Uh, her piano playing and her choices of chords um, was was very interesting to me. And uh, yeah, her her interest in spiritual uh, issues and and. Bringing, um, that's probably the, the biggest thing that she did for me, um, her, her emphasis on how important it is to manifest 
uh, spiritual uh, interests and spiritual goals uh, through through music and trying to transcend right this this world that we're in through um, through the use of music and jazz improvisation. Right, right. Um, yeah, after my second or third album purchase, I noticed that he had an Alice Coltrane on piano and her style was so different and so unique, so much different as we know than uh, McCoy Tyner from the Class Quartet. Yet, it was beautiful. It opened up like another new world where I heard harmonies I had not heard before, style I had not heard before. And because they were such a beautiful couple, you know, so tightly intertwined, you heard that devotion and love, I would say, in the music. So, um, yeah, I, I sort of stayed with that direction. And then, after Coltrane's passing, unfortunately, I never got to see John live. Um, he had already left the planet when I first found out about him, but then Alice Coltrane's music, of course, continued and continued, and, with, and probably inspired by her husband, she went into a deeply, deeply spiritual direction with albums like Journey into Satchitananda and um, many, many other beautiful recordings um, that were just so full of beauty and inspiration. And when she played the harp, it was like... Um, I was lucky enough to be on the same program with her. It was called Concert of Spiritual Music taking place at Hunter College, 1970... I think early 1975. Um, John McLaughlin and his wife, Carlos Santana and his wife, and Alice Coltrane's group. And I was part of the opening band called Jatra at that time, you know, and it was an unparalleled experience just being on the same program and hearing her incredible music live. So yes, she also had her own special influence. And, and when she played the organ, it was like no other organ player I'd heard either. It was almost like she was channeling her husband, you know, the way she was bending the notes on an organ. Who bends notes on an organ? You know, and so she was just such a deep expression. And so it was so great that she came back and made that beautiful album called Translinear Light. And unfortunately, she left us shortly after that recording was made. But yes, yeah, so she also had a profound influence as well. Yeah, today when I was playing on stage uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the jam band, um, I, I loved that we called up uh, 10, you know, 12 young players and they got to hear uh, what we were doing, what uh, all the influences that, that, that Coltrane has had on us. Um, and it was a real passing of the torch. Some of the players are just fantastic. And if this can be continued through the work that the Coltrane home does, I think it would be very, very powerful. And, and Alice and John were very much into community work, community building, sharing through music, teaching through music, and teaching us to be uh, deeper spiritual beings, not just the human part of a human being, but the being part. I think that Coltrane would be very proud of the work that we're doing to bring uh, young people into this, uh, into the heritage of the work that we did.